Hello and welcome back here to my next tutorial, or I would say more a bit of a shader breakdown. Today's topic is at least look dev, and I will call it advanced look dev because it's a bit more as just plug in your maps and hit the render button. So this is a project I'm working on currently and before I start with anything here I want to say a huge thank you to this guy here called Nicholas Hutchins. He modeled this helmet here for a Mario tutorial. Sadly, I cannot find it anymore on, on, on Google, um, but uh, he modeled that, he made a tutorial about that, and he also has a cool Gumroad page, so look at the page. He's actually a modeler at VitaFX, so he's a pretty big guy, so definitely check him out, and again, a huge, huge thanks to give me the green light to use here his great model for a tutorial. All right, so just to let you know, this isn't a tutorial about Solaris, it isn't a tutorial about Houdini, and also not about Llama. Llama is the shader system I'm using here. It's more about uh, look dev technique for a bit more advanced look dev styles. Um, one thing that it, you have it a bit more easier to follow this tutorial as I want to explain quickly what this nodes are doing. So Llama is broken up a bit more into the different aspects of, of a Uber shader. So what is a Uber shader? Uber shader is for example a pixel surface. It's the same like an AR standard surface or a V-Ray material. It's basically one material node where you have all the, all the inputs that a material can represent. For example, you have a glow, you have glass, you have fuzz, you have um, iridescence, you have diffuse, you have speculars, you have everything packed in one node. And Llama is a bit different. Llama is broken down into just the aspects you can see. It's just diffuse, it's just the specular, it's just metal. And you also have um, emission and you have subsurface scattering. The cool thing about that is you can just bring into your into your scene, what you really need. Just to let you know, it's it's just what you have also on a on a Uber shader. And just to let you know, this this tutorial is also possible to follow with with all the other render engines and with the material nodes. It's really more about the technique I'm using here. So uh, one last thing, as you can see here, I've color coded that for you, so it's hopefully a bit easier for you to follow. The red is all, all the time specular, the yellow is diffuse components, and the blue one is metallic here as well. But we will see that in just a bit. All right, let's start here, dive into the shader. Let's grab here my viewer node. Let's hook it here into our output and start viewing here the setup. As you can see, I have here pretty basic, pretty basic inputs like roughness, diffuse, metal, and bump. But we have it here as well. And the reason for that is I like to work in a, in a base stream where I just have my basic materials. They are more or less clean most of the time, except some hero details sometimes. So you just think away this, this white leaks. When we have a look on, on the material itself, it's more more or less clean. So we don't have dust, we don't have dirt, we don't have we don't have a rust. It's really just the material itself. Here's a metal, here kind of a metal as well. Then we have here the scratched metal underneath, and we have the, the blue paint going on, and here's the subsurface, and here's the glow. And I like to work with a clean stream and with the overlay stream. I call them base and overlay. And the reason why I do that is for hero assets, for example, you want to have more control over, over your shadow aspect. And that means I can go on any time in and just reduce the dirt. We can view it quickly and that you maybe can see what I mean. Where's my viewer node? Here's my viewer node. So currently we are viewing the diffuse of my base stream. And let's view the diffuse of my overlay. As you can see here, it's really just the dirt. We have occlusion dirt, we have dust that is almost not visible because of the black. And we have some oil that is also not really that visible, but we can see that in just a bit. And as I've said, this gives me the control 
over it that I want to have and looked at stage that I can push the texture work even further. So it's important to have your texture file, your textures, your texture scene already pushed as far as you can, that we can push it even further in look dev so we can add more quality to it. And yeah, I said, just push it harder. And one thing that is important that this works is we have, we have masks, right? Let's view one. We have here the mask one, which is interesting to view at. Let's hook it up. And as you can see, they are channel packed. So red, green, and blue. And that is cool that we only have to export one texture file and also create the takes files just for one texture file, but we can extract the different channels and get black and white masks again. And what I mean is with, it's important that this system works is that we have no, I don't want to use this one, but yeah, we can unplug it, that it works. Yeah, welcome to Vancouver. I think you can hear the horns, wee -oo, wee -oo. almost like Steve nipping tutorials where you always can hear the sirens. All right, what I mean is we have to combine the texture maps and the, the masks for the different aspects here. So we have, we have here this oil, then let's enable the next layer. We have the occlusion part and we have, if I get the checkbox right, we have the dust layer and we have to combine them and layer here this material. You can think about this is one material and this is one material. Oh, all the time it happens to me. And we have here the second material and we have co to combine these masks that all of the dirt overlay materials are represented on our output. So one thing that will maybe helps you to understand what's going on here is I split the different aspects before I bring them into my materials, all right? Here's, here's kind of my Uber shader and I split it here already instead of Let's let's view one quickly here. Let's let's view here. Diffuse. As we can see here, we have one metal here, we have a dark metal here, we have the ash scratches, and we have a dark blue, and we have a lighter blue. And instead of going into it and create for each of them one material and get in the end with one, two, three, and with the overlaying materials, um, about nine materials in total. Instead of getting nine materials, I'm ending up with one, two, three, and four. And that's way better in terms of performance instead of going crazy with your material nodes. And what I mean here is I split them up into into the different aspects. For example, I have here, I have here the darker parts, the darker blue, and I can get control over that with with a grade node. I can I can completely change to what I wanted. I can also change the color if I want. I can uh, this one. Let's go. We want to have it more a bit more towards a purple. I can go crazy what I want here. So because I have, I have the control and I'm using here the mask that I have here. So I have the isolation mask that we saw here. It's the blue part here. And it's also possible to to change the leaks. So I can I can change them here in terms of, of values. I can make them brighter, I can make them darker, whatever I want. And then I bring it into into my into my shader here. Let's bring it back here to normal. And then I bring it here into my diffuse part. And the same is going on here for for the for the specular. We can hook up here quickly my specular roughness. As you can see here, I also have the white leaks. I wanted to have them a bit more more rougher, so I've graded them here that they are not at black. And here, the darker parts are also made it a bit rougher. We can also say, hey, come on, we want to have them super glossy so we can bring it down and then we will get a, a glossy part here. And then I feed this information that I have here into, 
into my specular component here. And that's, as I've said, it's way better in terms of performance compared to layer, just tons of materials. And a little bonus tip here, what I'm doing here as well with Dinosaur Tropy, I'm using the roughness map and grade it a bit and bring it in super subtle to get, give a bit more, a bit more of, 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 of yeah, I would say, details in my in my shaders so that's a cool trick you can do play around with that but it's better to have it subtle instead of going crazy with it same i'm doing here on my metal component all right so as you can as you can see that's kind of all of all of the all of the magic i'm doing here and the only parts i start layering on top are really when they are different materials. For example, the emission parts for, for, for his lamps he, here, or for the rubber where I wanted to have a bit of subsurface scattering that's here on, on his neck. We can quickly view the output again. Where's the viewer node? Here's my viewer node. And uh, let's bring it to the end of the stream to view the shader. So really try to think a bit in a smart way. Where makes it sense to split and layer different material nodes? And where can you grade them or split it before you bring it into your, into your shader? And the same happens for your overlay. And the cool thing is, because we don't have it, this, this, this dirt baked into our base textures here, we can go into and say, hey, I want to get rid completely of, of the dust. And then you just go in and deactivate it here in, 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 your, in your mask, in your main mask where you combine all of them. Or we can, we can reduce it just a bit in strength, then we can bring in a ramp node and, and grade down a bit the mask, or we want to have it a bit more contrasted and we can grade it. And without affecting the base, which is underneath, which is, I call it, clean base materials it's really you can think about how it's something built in in real life let's say you have uh, metals are just such a great example so you have you have you have a metal it's, it's it's a clean clean version of it and then everything that is laying on that material like dust and dirt and grime and maybe some splashes all these things they are laid on top with a different material as we can see here, it's so cool. We can we can go in here and change it to whatever we want. We have it we have it isolated with a mask. And I'm doing that here for for many different different parts. And this is not completely done yet. I want to have a bit more overlaying materials here. Um, I can quickly show you the mask. I don't want to extend here the tutorial into into forever. So I think a bit shorter is better. Um, but why not show the masks as well? I think this one is mainly isolation, isolation masks. And here we are. Yeah, as we can see, here's the rubber part. We have the black metal part. We have the bare metal part here. Let's just frame it again. And here, yes, it's mixed. This is something that happens on my end on the fly. When I see, hey, now I need an isolation mask, and I create an isolation mask. Hey, I need a mask for, for the dust. And here, yeah, this one we already saw. This is in general uh, uh, a tip I want to give you. Start building on top and go go more complex over time. Don't start complex right away. Just add at the moment you really need it. Not just go completely crazy right away from the beginning. Think about what you need and add it. And if you see later, okay, um, I also want to have control over that aspect, export a mask for that and um, add it then to your to your system at the moment you need it and not just export for every single different dirt layer here and detail, let's say the splotches here and, and the dust and everything for, for every different aspect, like a mask and overload it completely just to not grade them in the end anyway so start as simple as possible and add complexity at the moment you need it so i think that's basically it 
Um, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And we also have a cool Discord server where you can join. So we have here the well-known Arvid Schneider with his tutorials. Why does Twitch you to the launch town? What the fuck? Um, yeah, we have uh, a cool Discord server. We are very helpful there. We are happy to help. And um, you can always ask questions there. You can also chat to me there if you have questions about the tutorial you saw here, if something was not clear and I think my computer is dying. So yeah, thanks for watching. I will cut it here and happy rendering. Bye bye.